I'm on a deserted island here in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, as you can see. This place is just deserted. It's like a ghost town. The British left it in 1942. And I'll tell you why soon. This place is called Ross Island. But let's go and find the, the military outpost here. They run the show here now. And we'll start from there and we'll walk across the entire length of what once was this like British paradise island. This place is seriously deserted. Just me, deers, and a few peacocks. I feel like I'm in that video game, Uncharted. Man, this is amazing. All right, we made it to the naval base here, and this is the furthermost point on the island. We're gonna start here. And right down there's a bunker where they used to kind of look out over here and check for incoming ships. The British, they built here on Ross Island. Basically, a home away from home. They built a mini England on this island. And it had absolutely everything you can imagine. They had a bakery, a swimming pool, a water distillation plant, a massive pond. They had three different clubs for everybody. Of course, there was accommodation because this is where the British people who were looking after the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, this is where they lived to oversee the area. They built tennis courts, they built churches, they built a library. They built a printing press here and they built markets. This place was just paradise on earth if you're British and you love the beach. The British chose Ross Island because it had a fresh water supply and it was like away from the mainland and it was this tiny little island. So they had a lot of security here as well. Ross Island is reminding me a lot of Humpy actually, where the really old ancient ruins are. These aren't ancient, right? This is just some British ruins. But it reminds me of that. And if you haven't been to Humpy, that's one of my favorite places in India, and you must visit Humpy if you're coming here. Right by the pond is this park, and it's just the creepiest sight, you know, like a deserted kids' playing ground. So how did all this stuff get destroyed? Well, in 1941, there was a massive earthquake and that was really the end of this island. A number of the buildings were just damaged beyond repair. And at the same time, it was World War II and the Japanese were coming to India. And the Japanese did eventually make it here to Ross Island like a year after that earthquake in May 1942. And they invaded, they took over the island, they jailed all the British people, which is quite funny, in cellular jail. Don't forget to check out that video that I made. That was where a lot of really famous Indian freedom fighters were jailed. Then when the Japanese came, they threw the British in that same jail. The Japanese invaded this island, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and then they kept going and they landed in northeast India and started their assault on India from there. But when World War II ended, when the American bombs went off, that was the end of it. Japanese had to withdraw and they, they never took over much of India. And this island is now named after the freedom fighter Bose. And it was his idea to invite the Japanese, or work with the Japanese at least, to kick the British out of India. And I'm not sure that was a great idea, right? I'm pretty sure, like, the British were terrible, but I'm pretty sure the Japanese would have ruled over India much, much worse than the British. Eventually, freedom was gained without the need of the Japanese. Thank God for that. We might all be speaking Japanese now and eating sushi. I don't even think Bose's body was ever found. He literally just, just disappeared sometime after independence. We've reached the end of the island now and it ends with, like I was just talking about, the Japanese and one of their bunkers. 
see if we can get down to their bunker. So after that earthquake and after the Japanese came, this island was just done. It was destroyed completely by both those two events. And so it was just left to rot. And then after independence in 1947, nothing happened here as well. The island was given to the Navy actually and they, they use it as a base here now. It's a strategic point, these, these islands, as the kind of entry to India across, across this ocean. And then a few years later they opened it up for tourists so people can come to Ross or Bose Island here and enjoy the history. The video is not over yet though. We've got to get down back to the shoreline and there's a few more things to show you. There were about 500 people living on this island, including Indians, so they also had a mandir here, a Hindu temple as well. It looks like it hasn't seen a lot of love in a long time though. Did you guys just see that? It's Indian family, the entire family, daughter and parents, were trying to feed a rabbit a chocolate bar wrapper, a foil wrapper. So like, what are you doing? All right, the rest of the tourists have turned up at this island. I'm no longer alone here. Time to get out of here, back to the mainland. To get here, you take a boat from Port Blair kind of jetty and it's 350 rupees. And if you come early in the morning, you can be alone here. And it's an incredible, incredible experience here.